beta blockers, and asthma and COPD. In this video, I'm going to talk about the relationship between these medications and asthma and COPD patients. So first, what is a beta blocker? These are medications that block the beta receptor. And most beta blockers block two beta receptors. They block beta 1 and they block beta 2. Now, where are these receptors located? Beta 1 receptor is located on the heart, and beta 2 receptor is located on the lungs. And the way I like to remember it is we have one heart, but we have two lungs. Now, when the beta 1 receptor is blocked, what actually happens? You get a decrease in the heart rate. And similarly, if you were to activate the beta-1 receptor, the heart rate would increase. Now let's turn our attention to the beta-2 receptor. If you block a beta-2 receptor, what happens? You get bronchoconstriction. And what that means is that the airways will narrow. And similarly, if you activate the beta-2 receptor, you will get bronchodilation. And medications that are used to help somebody with asthma or COPD do this. They bronchodilate. For example, albuterol. But this video is not about albuterol. It's about beta blockers. So very important to understand this. So this one shows that beta-1 receptors are on the heart. Beta-2 receptors are on the lungs. And please remember that the beta-1 receptor, when it's blocked, it will decrease the heart rate. And when the beta-2 receptor is blocked, it will cause bronchoconstriction. So now let's first talk about beta blockers and high blood pressure. Beta blockers are often prescribed to treat hypertension. Now, why is that? Why do beta blockers help somebody with high blood pressure? Well, a lot of it has to do with this formula. This formula essentially is cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. And if you remember, a beta blocker decreases the heart rate. So if you decrease the heart rate, according to this equation, you would also decrease the cardiac output and that would in turn lower the blood pressure. Less cardiac output means less volume, means less pressure. So now let's talk about asthma and COPD. And what would happen if you gave somebody a beta blocker? You would get bronchoconstriction, which is something you do not want because you would worsen the patient's asthma or COPD. So we come to the big question, what to do if you have a patient who has high blood pressure, hypertension, and asthma or COPD? If, do you give a beta blocker or not? Well, this is the solution. You give something called a beta-1 selective beta blocker. These are also referred to as cardioselective, and the reason is they only work on beta-1 receptor. So the only thing they will do is decrease the heart rate. They will not affect the beta-2 receptor. You give this beta-1 selective beta blocker, helps lower the blood pressure, doesn't touch the lung, you don't get any adverse pulmonary side effects. Sounds easy, right? But it's never easy because at high doses, sometimes these beta-1 selective beta blockers can also cause some level of bronchoconstriction. So in the real world, a lot of physicians avoid beta blockers altogether in patients that have asthma or COPD. But on medical licensing exams, trust me, this is very high yield and they will test you on this. So I want you to remember four medications that are indeed beta-1 selective, also known as cardioselective. 
atenolol, acebutalol, metoprolol, and esmolol, which is given IV. So a typical exam question will be, you have a patient who has high blood pressure, but also has, say, asthma or COPD. You want to give them a beta blocker, and you want to select a beta-1 selective beta blocker. So they'll give you a bunch of beta blockers, and they'll say, which one should you choose? So choose the one that is beta-1 selective. Now, also keep in mind that you have non-selective beta blockers as well. These are the ones that work on both beta-1 and beta-2. And I'll just give you about four, propranolol, carvedilol, labetalol, and timolol, which is actually an eye drop given in glaucoma. These are by far the most popular ones that are non-selective, so keep those in mind because these are the ones you want to avoid in a patient who has asthma or COPD if you are treating that patient's blood pressure. So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. 54-year-old man with emphysema, which is a component of COPD, presents to his physician with a blood pressure of 157 over 101. Over the next several months, the physician prescribes angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, ACE inhibitors, diuretics, and calcium channel blockers but the patient has to discontinue each because of undesirable side effects. The physician then decides to prescribe a beta antagonist, a beta blocker. Which of the following beta antagonists would be most appropriate for this particular patient? So don't get confused. Beta antagonist just means beta blocker. So based on our video, you choose a beta blocker that is beta one selective. And of the answer choices listed, which one is that? That would be a metoprolol. A 38-year-old man has his blood pressure measured on three different occasions in clinic, yielding values of 145 over 95, 160 over 105, 150 over 100. Careful history reveals that he has had problems with asthma since childhood. The decision is made to treat the patient with a beta blocker. Again, similar concept, you would use a beta-1 selective, and of the answer choices listed, the beta-1 selective drug is atenolol, choice A. And finally, a 32-year-old woman comes to the office for a prescription of propranolol for stage fright. She tells you that she is a professional singer and lately, she has been experiencing butterflies and palpitations before performances. She has been so worried about having one of these symptoms that she is having trouble sleeping at night. She tells you that a friend of hers has a similar problem and propranolol has cured her. She has been a patient of yours for the past 10 years and you remember that she has severe asthma requiring many hospitalizations, the most recent being two weeks ago. Her asthma attacks have been increasingly more severe and have been occurring at an increased frequency. She tells you that she is in a rush and all she needs is a prescription. The most appropriate next step is. Let's talk a little bit about this. This is not a blood pressure patient, right? So why is she taking propanolol? Well, do you remember what propanolol does? It blocks beta-1 receptors and that will decrease heart rate. So because of that, sometimes it's given to patients to reduce anxiety. For example, if you get on stage and you're nervous, your heart will start beating fast. So they give propanolol sometimes to lower the heart rate to calm the patient down. It has been used. So that's why she was given propranolol, and that's why she wants it, I guess. But she has asthma. So because she's taking propranolol, her asthma is getting worse because propranolol also blocks beta-2, and that's causing bronchoconstriction. So propanolol is not a good medication for her because it's making her asthma worse. So she should discontinue the propanolol and 
doctor can probably prescribe her something else that will help alleviate her stage fright. So the one that is correct is choice B. Explain that propranolol is not a good choice for her.